Welcome back to another video. Now, today I'm going to be teaching you basically how to create like a, a motion blur effect in Photoshop. Now, I've had probably about five people uh, message me on Instagram asking me how I did this for one of my posts. So today I'm going to teach you how to turn an image that looks like this into either this with like the, the a decent amount of blur or this kind of image where you literally just blur everything the hell out of it and so kind of it doesn't look very natural but it kind of creates a really nice effect which i quite like so i'm going to teach you how to do both of those today hopefully this helps you out now before we get on with the video um last video i mentioned how i won a giveaway for a gimbal and it has actually arrived right here so this is the hohem tech reaxis gimbal now as i said i have my dji osmo mobile 3 which is right here so I put my, can put my phone in here for cinematics and stuff and yeah, it's a really nice gimbal but now I've also on a second gimbal so that's crazy, I guess I just have two now Anyway, I'll stop talking and we'll get on with how to blow your photos So now we're on my computer and we're just going to jump into Photoshop to get this going So now we're in Photoshop, we're just going to click open right here We're going to head over to desktop which is where I save the photo for this uh, Just, just gonna click on it right here uh, now obviously this is JPEG because Photoshop doesn't actually accept RAW for straight editing. So now we've got this image here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to unlock this layer. We're then going to click convert to smart object. Wait for it to load. So now this uh, image is now a smart object. We're going to right click and we're going to click um, duplicate layer. And we're just going to call this layer blur. And just click OK. So now we've got two copies of this layer. Uh, the next thing you want to do is to this top layer called Blur. You want to add a little mask down in the right hand side corner here. So now we've got the mask on here. Making sure we've got this one selected right here. We're going to go up to Filter. Then we're going to go to the Blur Gallery. And then we're going to click oh, Blur Gallery. And then we're going to click Path Blur. Now the reason you don't want to just use normal motion blur is motion blur uh, blurs it forwards and backwards at the same time. Um, creating effect that doesn't look real, whereas path blur uh, makes the blur go like in one direction and doesn't blur things either way. So now we've activated uh, path blur, you can see there's an arrow right here, so we want to make sure we point the arrow in the way uh, that the blur would be going. So in this case it would be going off that way, and we're just going to stretch out this line in roughly the right angle that the motion blur would normally be at, which is probably... I'd say around there. The next thing we're going to do to create a really nice blur effect is we're going to take this one right up here, click on it here, and we're going to take end point speed and we're going to put that all the way up to the top. Then I'm going to take this side, take end point speed, take that all the way up to the top. Now you may think this looks really blurred, but what we're going to do to it now is we're going to take this little taper here and we're going to put this slider all the way up to the top. So now that's at the top, and the way we're going to create our, our blur is by just using the speed dial right here and moving up more and more. So the starting look we're probably going to go for is a look where we want a blur, something probably around, I'd say, this. There you go. Probably something around that. We could maybe take a little bit more down. I think I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably happy with this look. So now we've got that uh, speed at 85%. We're just going to click OK. Now, because this uh, is quite a heavy thing it's doing, Photoshop will take a bit of time to load. So when you click OK, you're probably going to have to wait a minute or two at least for it to actually do and apply the blur to your image. So I'm just going to do that now. Right, so now with the blur has done, that probably took probably, I don't know, four minutes or something. So you may have to just uh, wait a sec. Um, but the next step we're going to do, taking this layer still here again, we're going to drop the opacity down to probably something like, uh, probably 80%, maybe. Now there's a slight wash over here, and that's because the opacity obviously is dropped, it's not fully blurred. But we're going to take the brush tool right up here, click on that. Uh, we're going to increase the size of it, probably a decent amount. Make sure that our hardness is, I don't know, I'm going to keep mine pretty low, 20%. And we're basically just now just going to brush around this whole guy um, to make sure that he's brushed out from the rest. And making sure that this layer here is also black on top. Yep. Also, as we're doing this, just thought I should point out, as we're using a mask, uh, you can uh, rub in and rub back out uh, 
party your image. So if we have black selected on the top, uh, it's obviously going to remove our image like that. Um, but if we switch it around using this and it's white on top, as we paint it in, it's going to repaint back in our image. So if you if you go over the line, you can always repaint by selecting white on top and get rid by having the black on the top. Also, if you want to see exactly what you've um, exactly what you've uh, highlighted, uh, just click the back shift, I believe it is, like that, and it will all come up in red, and then you can fully see exactly what you've highlighted, and make sure you haven't missed out any bits by accident. Right, so I've basically gone over everything. If you click shift, you can see I've gone over pretty much everything. I mean, I can't really fault anything. I mean, you could probably spend all day trying to highlight and then perfectly do every edge, but really no one is gonna notice. So now that we've basically cut out using the black, um, the layer we had underneath, um, the only bit of that layer that is showing is uh, the person because we've cut the person out from this top layer. So what we're going to do now as this top layer has the blur which is all around here, we zoom back out for a second to the actual image size and then we're going to take the opacity of this layer and put it all the way up to the top again. So now you can see that already you can go back into your blur gallery by just clicking blur gallery here and changing some of your speed settings if you want less blur more blur but you can see what we've done here is we basically just created a really nice motion blur probably a bit more than there might be if you were actually doing it with your camera but i still think this creates a really really nice effect i mean you can keep doing this as much as you like i mean if i put this all the way at the top just for an example um it just it is a complete wash it literally will blur everything out of your image uh but if you like that effect why not go for it i've seen quite a few people do it on instagram but for me, I think my preferred look is probably to go for less. That is how you do it in Photoshop. Uh, now I'm just going to jump into Lightroom for those of you who want to know. If, if this is all you want to know, you can click off the video now. But I'm just going to jump into Lightroom now with this photo and just show you how to do a quick edit on this for whoever wants to know. So we're in Lightroom now, um, so now we're just going to find the photo that we took, which is in Photoshop folder. Uh, this one right here, we saved. So we're now going to drop that into here, click import. Um, so we now have this photo right here, we're just going to click D to go into develop. Now I'm going to show you two different um, edits, I already had a look at the different edits I could do, but I'm going to show you two different types that I both really like and can't actually decide which one I prefer. Uh, now I'm going to be using some of North Border's 7th Era's presets, so if you would like to pick up these presets, they're obviously on their YouTube channel. It is possible to create a similar effect and it's not that hard, but I'm going to be using the presets just to make sure it doesn't take too long and to just kind of give you an understanding of what kind of colour grade you could do to make this feel really nice. So the first one we're just going to go into the new day set and we're just going to click the daytime preset. Right, so we've got the daytime preset on now. Originally this looks a little kind of blue, so I'm just going to up the temperature a little bit. I might drop the shadows a bit, uh, drop the highlights, bring up the shadows a little bit more. Going to keep the clarity probably where it is, I'm going to keep that saturation down a bit, that vibrant down a little bit. I'm going to go into our colour tab, I prefer the colour tab to the HSL because everything's just together. Uh, we're probably going to take the blues down a little bit. I think they're a little overpowering. And we're going to make sure we boost the orange a little bit more. Because quite like that. Reds a little bit. Make that bike stand out. That was what we'll do. So now we're zoomed in on the person. We're just going to grab our brush tool. Uh, make sure your feather's probably around 100. You've got a decent size. And this doesn't need to be neat. Make sure you click O so you can see what you're masking and we're just going to paint over this guy and I'll show you what we're doing in a sec. Right, 
right, so we've more or less masked everything. I mean, we don't really need to mask anymore. It doesn't need to be neat at all. And we're just going to grab the uh, the clarity, just up it a little bit, so it makes sure it stands out from the background a little more. We'll really keep it around that, something like that. Click done. Go back to the outside screen. And now this is the before and this is the after. So this is one of the edits uh, that I really like. Uh, and in a second, I'm going to show you the second edit. That's before. That's after, and I think that looks really nice. Uh, so let's move on to the second one. So now we're gonna do our second edit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click reset right here so everything goes back to where it was originally. And um, now we're gonna go into the, I believe it's in the, I think it's new nature, yep. And then we're gonna go down to the summer vibes preset. Uh, we're gonna click on this. Now, when you see this, think, oh my God, that looks like, that looks horrible. Uh, but you wait a sec, all we have to do is just grab the exposure drop it right down and already it's looking tons better than it was originally. Now what we're gonna do is this looks really kind of uh, slightly faded and blurry and that's because clarity's down. So we're just gonna up the clarity a bit, probably I would say around there. Uh, I'm liking the look of this already. Then we're gonna jump into our, our color again like we did previously, up the reds, uh, I'm gonna up the oranges a little bit to make sure they stand out but look more natural, make sure we up blues a bit as well, something like that, does that do anything, yeah, something like that, and now already from the beginning to the end, we're already getting this kind of really nice autumny look with the uh, slightly like, browny leaves, um, I think I might remove a little bit of extra blue because I think the rose look a bit too blue, so just remove some of that right there, and Again, that's looking a lot nicer. So I might drop the shadows a little bit, just so the wheels aren't like in the bottom of the motorbike aren't showing too much. Might up the highlights a tiny bit. Keep the contrast low, I like it like that. Um, and then finally, we're just gonna zoom in on this guy like we did originally, or like we did in the previous image. We're gonna take our brush filter and we're just gonna brush over this guy, make sure we click O again. I'm just gonna brush over this guy, making sure to paint him all out. So now we've highlighted all of that, we're just going to click O to unhide what we've masked. We're going to grab the clarity we get. Um, I feel like when we're doing this um, sort of edit, we want to make sure that the biker has got lots of clarity to make sure that the, the blur isn't sort of going across the person. If you see we up it, if we see we reduce it, uh, it kind of goes all washed out and you might think it's kind of mixing in with the blur in the background. So we want to make sure that we add clarity in to separate it from that background more. Only a tiny bit though, just like that. Click done and click fit again to make sure we fit the whole screen. And already we've turned an image looking from that into that. And I think that edit looks really, really nice. So that is it for today's video. Hopefully you're now able to apply whatever blur you want. If you want the really big blur or the less blur and that color grade might have helped you out. You may have noticed on my channel recently, I've been uploading lots of photography content and that's obviously because I've been getting right into it. Now, previously all my YouTube videos have just been about all sorts of different things, fun videos, dares, whatever, I've probably done it. And that's where most of my subscribers have come from. And now I'm getting new subscribers from my photography, from like coming from my Instagram and stuff. But I wanna please the people who have subscribed to me previously and aren't into photography. So send me a message on Instagram of all the video ideas that you wanna see me do. And obviously if I pick your idea, I'll give you a shout out in whatever form you want. But anyway, hopefully this video helped you. And if it did, leaving a like would mean a lot to me. But anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.